folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. Hey, Black, I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Today is Tuesday, February 27, 2024. Coming up on Roland Martin Unfiltered, streaming live on the Black Star Network. A guilty verdict in the Jam Master J murder case will give you those details 20 years after he was murdered. The Kansas City Chiefs fan falsely identified uh, as the mass shooter has yet to get an apology from the white Republicans who plastered his face all over social media. Denton Loudermill and his attorney will join us tonight and will show you what those MAGA lawmakers said about giving this man an apology. In a Robert Martin unfiltered exclusive, self-described the people's super mayor, Tiffany Hayward, H Henyard, I'm sorry, of Dalton, Illinois, will join us to discuss the ex excessive hate mail she receives, also allegations of her extravagant spending, security detail, as well as attire. Uh, folks also uh, on today's show, Tennessee Republicans are doing everything they can to diminish the power of the people. The Tennessee House, the Republicans there passed a bill that will prevent cities from replacing lawmakers who they oust. They're targeting the two Justins, Representative Justin Jones and Justin Pearson. Folks, it's time to bring the funk. I'm rolling Martin on a filter on the Black Star Network. Let's go. Whatever the miss, he's on it. Whatever it is, he's got the scoop, the fact, the fine. And when it breaks, he's right on time. And it's rolling. Best believe he's knowing. Putting it down from sports to news to politics. With entertainment just for kicks, he's rolling. Folks, breaking news out of New York. A New York jury has convicted two men in the 2002 murder of Run DMC rap pioneer uh, Jason Mizell, better known as Jam Master J. Ronald Washington and Carl Jordan Jr. were found guilty on federal charges of murder while engaged in drug trafficking in the shooting at Mizell's New York City recording studio. Washington was a childhood friend, and Jordan was Mizell's my, my godson. They grew up in the same Queens neighborhood. The duo faces a maximum sentence of life in prison and a mandatory minimum of at least 20 years in prison. 
In May, a third defendant, Jay Bryant, was also indicted in the murder and is due to face a separate trial in 2026. Uh, I want to go to uh, one of my panel members, John Quill Neal, attorney out of Atlanta. John Quill, first of all, uh, the interesting thing about this particular case here, it was 22 years after the fact. There were actual witnesses there. Many of them were afraid to come forward because they feared for their life as well. Uh, and so uh, this is not one of those cases where you didn't have a weapon, you didn't have witnesses. They were actually present. They just simply took all of these years to identify these two shooters. Yes, and that's what you can expect in a case like this, right? When you have eyewitnesses that when you're dealing with drug dealers, game bangers that have reputations for doing harm in the community, you're going to have witnesses that are going to be uncooperative. Um, and frankly, um, it is no stranger to the district attorney's office as a former prosecutor for them to try a case of this age. Um, it, it, it's, of course, you have the stale of evidence. However, um, there was tons of evidence in this case. I mean, this is a case where you got eyewitness testimony. Um, one of them at least made an admission to a girlfriend. And what others uh, who watched the trial would know is that the gunshot wound um, to Jam Master J they are able to tell that was in close and range. There's something known as soot and stippling that um, if someone is shot at point blank range, um, they can tell that based on the physical evidence. And if what physical evidence they had matched the, the evidence that was presented or testimony from these witnesses, then they found they were able to get a conviction all these years later. Uh, and uh, I mean, obviously, justice for the family. Uh, and, you know, this was this just, just, just one of those stories that shocked uh, so many people. Uh, but also, people have to, have to remember, there's no statute of limitations when it comes to murder. No, there is not. There is no statute of limitations. Um, and frankly, it took them a while to bring them to justice. But um, just because justice is slow, I mean, it's, we still got justice at the end of the day. Um, and hopefully, Jam Master Jay's family receives some closure after the jury's verdict. Uh, indeed, indeed. Uh, all right, folks, uh, let's go to uh, our next story. Uh, yesterday, there was a funeral of the woman uh, who was shot and killed at the Kansas City Chiefs uh, Super, Super Bowl parade. Uh, yet, what you uh, still see happening, though, uh, is one individual who was uh, accused of being the shooter who still uh, is seeking uh, justice, Ditton Laudermill. Uh, folks, uh, his name, his face and name was plastered all over social media uh, because you had individuals uh, who were declaring that he was involved. They also called him uh, an illegal alien. I mean, this thing went on and on and on, and there were a number of Republican lawmakers who were involved in this, posting this stuff on social, uh, social media. Laudermill now is dodging death threats and trying to repair his reputation uh, that others have tarnished, and they won't apologize. When Missouri State Senator uh, Rick uh, Branton was questioned about it, he, he owed, if he owed Denton an apology, he said this. Hey, Tim, do you think you should apologize oh. to Denton Loudermill, that guy that you Here's accused of being a mass shooter? I think he wants to left it up you. for Hold on, folks, one second. Never... Okay, hold on, so that's the video of Tennessee State. This is from Missouri. He says, I'm not even commenting on that. That's not even part of the discussion. There's nothing that I even see even worth that. So we've done nothing, and you know I have no comment. Now, Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett, he let the lie about Denton on, left on social media for four days, even though numerous people were telling him to take it down. This is what he said when he was asked about issuing an apology. Hey, Tim, do you think you should apologize oh. to Denton Loudermill, that guy that you accused of being a mass shooter? I think he wants to left interview it up you for four for days, news. Tim, and never apologized to the guy? Why didn't you apologize to that guy? such an easy thing to do. Just apologize to the man. You know, your mother told me, allegedly, that you were the second biggest disappointment in her life. That's literally his response. Joining us right now is Denton Laudermill and his attorney, uh, Lorana Lasseter uh, Saunders uh, from Overland Park, Kansas. Glad to have both of you here. Um, I I'll start with you, uh, Denton. Um, walk folks through what your life has been like um, since this shooting took place 
And again, you were you were seen there in cuffs. People are putting your face and name, saying, "Here is the mass shooter that screwed up this whole parade, that shot, that killed one person and wounded 20 others." Uh, I think you're on mute. Excuse me. There we go. Now, now we can hear you. Go ahead. Like okay, right now my life is like a, a living hell because everyone knows me now and. I'm getting people asking me different weird questions and, and running the opposite way of me. And I really don't get on social media much, but my daughters and my other family members read the threats and stuff that I'm getting and the, and the hate that I'm getting. But I just want everyone to know that's on social media. I had nothing to do with anything. I mean, you're simply attending a parade along with thousands of others, a shooting breaks out. Uh, and then uh, you're now having to deal with uh, folks, uh, you know, again, plastering your name. And uh, what's crazy here is that these individuals were told, take this stuff down, and they refused to do so. Yes, well, in that, on that situation, I think that they should be held accountable for what they did. And I think I really deserve an apology because he put my life in, like, serious danger. You know, like, it's hard for me to sleep sometimes because I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking about my family, but I just want my name cleared and I want everybody to know I had nothing to do with anything. Um, this obviously, obviously has to be difficult. Uh, have you had to move and get to change phone numbers? Uh, what have you had to do? Um, how has your life uh, changed uh, physically since all this took place? Um, right now, at the moment, I don't want to um, speak on that situation. I'd rather let my attorney talk on that situation, but I just don't want to say nothing about that situation. Lorana, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, thank you for having us on here, and thank you for helping us spread the truth, because the lies have taken off, and um, we're trying to play catch up, especially when you have congressmen and senators um, leading the attack. Um, Mr. Denton, he is concerned about his family. He has a uh, young adult and teenage daughters. Um, and so we have to be concerned about their safety. We have to be concerned about their mental health. Um, you know how kids are, teenagers are, they're getting harassed, um, comments about their father being a murderer. Um, so it, it's gonna take a lot to clear his name or repair his name. Um, and even though we've asked um, several times for the images to be taken down, you have Congressman uh, Tim, he took his down and then reposted it and said, this shooter, he's not illegal. So that didn't help at all. Not only did you not take it down properly, but then you still insinuated that he was the shooter. So we just need um, to clear up, he wasn't the shooter. He didn't know the shooters. A lot of times people want to try to associate it like, well, he must have did something. He did exactly what a half million other people did. He had several drinks at a chief's parade. He was moving too slow. They detained him. And when he was in handcuffs, those pictures went viral. That is all he did. It's not illegal. He's not a criminal. And so we really just need help spreading the truth and, and then asking people, Accept the truth. Don't try to go dig in his background and like, well, he must have did something. No, accept the truth. You ran with the lie. Now apologize. What recourse uh, do you have? I mean, clearly they, they don't want to even apologize. Uh, can you sue them? Will you sue them? We can absolutely sue them. We are putting together a stellar legal team. Um, and they're, they're making our jobs easy, really. Anytime you have a post, stay online for four days, and then you repost it as a retraction, you're making our jobs pretty easy. So the liability, the defamation is not even a question. It's more the human decency of why wouldn't you apologize if it was misinformation and there was no ill intent? Um, it seems like a responsible adult. What we would expect our leaders to do is just own it hey, I was given misinformation, I'm sorry this happened to you. Just something simple like that. Well, absolutely. Uh, and it, it's not that hard, and it shows you uh, their absolute arrogance. Exactly. We need our leaders to be 
practice what you preach. Um, there are role models. They're supposed to be role models. And so the your mother comment that he re responded to that post is absolutely out of order, disrespectful. That doesn't to me, that doesn't look like a leader to me. That doesn't look like someone I would want my kids patterning, patterning their uh, life after. Um, and so this is what this is what we do. We, uh, myself, my Better America, we are here to try to give the voice to the voiceless. What's a an everyday American citizen to do when you have congressmen and senators leading the attack? Uh, absolutely. Questions for my panel, Dr. Dr. Mustafa, Mustafa Santiago Ali, former senior advisor for environmental justice with the EPA out of D.C. As I said, John Quill Neal, trial attorney with the John Quill Neal firm out of Atlanta, Dr. Larry J. Walker, assistant professor, University of Central Florida out of Orlando. Mustafa, you first. Yeah, well, Mr. Laudermilla, I'm, I'm sorry that you have to go through this situation. You know, I'm, I'm looking through a psychological lens also, so maybe this question is either for the attorney or for you, sir. Um, many individuals who go through these types of situations also have to deal with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So I'm curious, based upon some of the things you shared, um, do, do you feel that that's also a part of uh, some of the things that you're currently dealing with? Um, I'll, I'll let my attorney handle that, but I've been taking some steps. But from there, I'll let her handle what's going on from here. So the, the response, and we're not trying to um, not comment, it's just that we there is going to be some legal action and there is going to be a lot of people being held accountable and we don't necessarily want them to know where we're coming from. So um, the mental health, the distress, the emotional distress, all of the damages, you take that and multiply it by 100,000 because that's how many times a uh, congressman's post was shared in one day. Um, and so he's processing. It's easier said than done. It's easy to, you know, pe for people to just say, you know, move on or, oh, that's old news. It's not old news. He's living with this every day. Every day. Some people are just now um, becoming aware of the situation. When you Google, when you Google five years from now, you're going to, somebody's still going to have his face out there. So this is not going to be a simple fix and it's something he's going to be dealing with for years to come. John Quell. Yes, I mean, it, essentially, um, what the state representatives have, their behavior is a violation of the public trust with the dissemination of misinformation um, as a, in this specific case. Um, what I will ask also is with the police department, right, in order for them to detain someone, there has to be a reasonable, articulable suspicion, right, that they're likely to commit a crime or have committed a crime. It's my understanding that the people involved in this case were teenagers, right, or very young individuals, which he doesn't meet, fit the description, not even close. He fits the description of someone that would be a parent in this case. And so from what I read, it appears that um, as it relates to he was detained for allegedly moving too slow away from the crime scene. But what, how and what actions are going to be taken to hold the police accountable for this illegal detention um, that we have going on here? Thank you for that question. That's an excellent question. Um, My Better America is a, a nonprofit that is built on trying to hold law enforcement and those um, in authority making those type of decisions, holding them accountable. And so we really haven't even had a chance to address the law enforcement, the detention piece, because of the senators and the congressmen um, fanning the flames. But we do intend to address that. Um, we have reached out to the mayor of Kansas City, um, the chief of police, and we haven't heard anything back, which doesn't surprise me because I don't know how you detain someone for moving too slowly. I don't know how you detain someone for having several drinks at a chief's parade. And so you, you asked a very good, good question, and it's not over. Larry? Yeah, Mr. Louder Mill, I'm, I'm really sorry, as my colleagues have said, that everything you have gone through the last couple of weeks, I, 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 you know, for you and your family, this was, must be a very difficult situation. And so I, I guess my question that. is, yeah, no problem. I, I guess my question is also for your attorney. And I know that, you know, a lot of social media platforms in the last couple of years have tried to take some steps, better, some better than others, in terms of when information is posted that's inaccurate. And have you reached out to social media platforms like X and others to have this information scrubbed? or at least at a minimum has some kind of information that's attached to that 
as a warning that this information is, is not accurate? We have um, several organizations that have been helping um, keep eyes on the situation, um, sending us information, reaching out to the different platforms as well as the under individuals. And so that is one of the, the processes that we are in now. Um, I know X has, has done a, a decent job of um, flagging or contacting people that have given misinformation. For instance, the person that associated the name Sahil Omar, um, this prankster or the name that's been used in several instances, they made the person take um, the post down. So it, it's, um, it's a huge area and there's not a lot of movement in there, but there has been some. And this is just an example of when uh, reality hasn't caught up with technology yet. Um, so. Yes, we are. We are definitely. We have that on the list too of all the things that we need to do to help repair Mr. Denton's name. Um, have, holding the platforms accountable is one as well. All right, then. We'll certainly keep us abreast uh, of what happens next. We appreciate both of you joining us. Thank you. All right, folks. Uh, Got to go to a break. Uh, we come back. Uh, lots to talk about, including an exclusive interview with the mayor of a town in South Chicago, South Chicago suburbs, uh, who has been criticized for her spending. Uh, she's been defending herself. She joins us to talk about the controversy. Uh, all of that coming up next right here on Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Be sure to support us in what we do. Be sure to join our Bring the Folk fan club. Uh, you can, of course, uh, join our Bring the Folk fan club. Send your check and money order, P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash app, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal, or Martin Unfiltered. Venmo, Venmo's RM Unfiltered. Zale, Roland at RolandSMartin.com. Rolling at RolandMartinFilter.com. We'll be right back. You heard why we're marching, and, and it's really a launch. It's not even a march. We're launching That's right. a 42-week campaign march, the second at 10 o'clock in Raleigh and 33 other state capitals right. and the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a historic move to mobilize mm -hmm. the most powerful untapped block of voters in this country, right. poor and low wealth voters, who make up 87 million votes. And it's never been tried before, never been tried before in history. At the same time, the same message, same focus. And when that power turns loose, yes. they will not be able to figure out the political calculus. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shake things up. I'm ready to get up out of the valley. I'm ready for God to put his spirit on us. I'm ready to be used to change this nation. And what we're saying is, can't we come together? Can't we come together around an agenda? You ain't got to like everything about Reverend Barber. You don't have to like everything about St. Greer. You don't have to like everything about Long Choir. But can we come together and say, it's time to end poverty as the fourth leading cause of death? It's time to have $15 and a living wage indexed with inflation. So every time inflation goes up, the minimum wage goes up. It's time to have health care for all. It's time to fully fund public education. Can't we come together? It's time to protect women's right to women's health. It's time, it's time to have affordable housing for everybody. It's time to stop the proliferation of guns. Ain't no way folk ought to be able to have more guns than they have food, more guns than they have meat on their table. That makes makes no sense. Isn't it time for division to be ended and love to take over? Can't we organize around that? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't need to like everything about you. But can't we organize for power? Can't we stand for justice? Can't we love everybody for just a little while? Can't we come out of the valley? America's Wealth Coach and host of Get Wealthy. Let me hit you with a few numbers. African Americans spend nine times the amount 
on ethnic beauty products and yet only own 1% of the beauty supply stores. It's an $18 billion industry. On the next Get Wealthy, you're going to learn and hear from a woman who's turning this obstacle into an opportunity. We literally take you from A to Z on all of the things step by step you need to have in place to open and run a very successful beauty supply store. That's right here with me, Deborah Owens, host of Get Wealthy only on Black Star Network. Next on The Frequency with me, Dee Barnes, the amazing Drew Dixon. She gives us the details behind the HBO documentary that shed light on the alleged sexual assault by Russell Simmons. And we're talking about the Netflix documentary, Ladies First, right here on The Frequency on the Black Star Network. For the last 15, or maybe 16 years, 18 years, I'll say, since I, when I moved to L.A., I hadn't had a break. I hadn't had a vacation. I had a week vacation here or there. Right. This year, after I got finished doing Queen Sugar and we wrapped it up, because I knew I had two TV shows coming on at the same time, mm -hmm. so I'm going to take a little break. So I've been on break for the first time, and I can afford it. Praise right. God. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So I can afford it. I'm like, I can right. sit back and ain't got nothing to worry about, man. But this was the first time in almost in, in two decades wow. that I've actually had time to sit back. Wow. And, and, and smell the roses. On the next A Balanced Life with me, Dr. Jackie, what does it mean to actually have balance in your life? Why is it important and how do you get there? A masterclass on the art of balance. It could change your life. Find the harmony of your life. And so what beat can you maintain at a good pace? What cadence can keep you running that marathon? Because we know we're going to have you know, high levels, we're going to have low levels, but where can you find that flow, that harmonious pace? That's all next on A Balanced Life on Black Star Network. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Latasha, from the A. And you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, welcome back to Roller Martin Unfiltered. Uh, don't forget uh, to, uh, of course, download our Black Shirt Network app, Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV, uh, and uh, to watch our 24 hour, seven day a week streaming channel. You know, we're on four different fast channels, so you can check us out on Amazon Fire. So if you go to, excuse me, Amazon News, if you go to Amazon Fire, uh, you could you go tell us there, tell Alexa Play News from the Black Star Network. Uh, in addition to that, you can also catch us out, catch us on Plex TV, Amazon Freebie, and of course, uh, Amazon Prime Video. All right, folks, uh, my next guest has uh, made national headlines. Uh, you've had uh, news outlets from all around the country writing about her, talking about her, uh, and uh, which is sort of rare when you are the mayor of uh, a small town uh, in Chicago. Uh, Tiffany Inyard is the mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Uh, and uh, there have been uh, all sorts of stories written, folks talking about what she wears, talking about her conduct, allegations about spending, uh, you name it. There's been uh, lots of drama, if you will. Uh, she joins us right now. I'm glad to have you here in studio. And so, first off, um, so there are a couple of things. You're the mayor of Dalton, and then also you have, there's a township. So explain to folks the difference between those two and what your jobs are. Sure, sure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you allowing me a platform to speak my truth. Um, the mayor. I'm the mayor of Dalton. I got elected in 2021, becoming the first female uh, mayor of Dalton and the youngest. And then I got appointed to supervisor a year later. 
So a mayor, we are all about services. So cut trees down, sidewalks, things of that nature. Um, supervisor is strictly resources. So help pay your light bill, gas bill, water bill. I even help bury your loved ones. I pay mortgage, I pay rent. It's a resource center. So okay, that's the so difference. you have, so Dalton is a town about 20,000. How, how large is the township? Township covers what? I cover 190,000 residents. Okay. I'm over 17 towns. Okay, so, yes. and our, uh, and for the township, mm -hmm. are those elected positions or appointed positions? Yes, it's elected. Um, my predecessor passed away and I was appointed to his seat, therefore taking the rest of his term. Okay, uh, and for, for the different jobs, so Dalton pays you what as mayor, township pays you what? Sure, so my mayor position is $50,000, which was already there, and my township position is two twenty four, dollars which was already there. When I got sworn in to either seat, I, it came with the salary, which everybody prior to me received. Now, are both of those deemed full-time jobs? Well, no, part-time. Okay. Yes. All right, so, so let's, let's, let's first deal with Dalton. So sure. uh, your critics say uh, that uh, you have a significant security detail. First of all, how large is your police department uh, in Dalton, uh, and what is your security detail? So we have about 45 officers in mm -hmm. our village. Um, my security is warranted due to the fact of threats and things of that nature, but what people are not stating is it's in our CBA. That's our collective bargaining agreement. That's our union contract. So it comes with the seat. That's what people are not saying. I didn't make this up. I didn't just create this and say, I want security. How, how many officers is it? How many officers is what? On, on security detail. Uh, I'm not going to say how many due to the threats of, on my life. So. But, if, but, if it's, but, if, but if it's in your CBA. It is in my CBA. I'm not doing anything wrong. I even went to court due to the fact of people suing me saying I cannot have a security detail. And I won. The judge said I can't have a security detail because it's already in a CBA. Okay. And so... Um, that, that, that's one of the issues there. Mm -hmm. um, you have other trustees who suggested that the city uh, is in a deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the state of the city's finances? So we are in a deficit, but it's not what everybody's claiming it to be. They're going around um, with false allegations of five million, seven million, eight million. It's all false. Our deficit is two million dollars. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. And uh, what's your annual budget? Our annual budget is thirty million dollars. Three million dollars. Thirty. Thirty million dollars. Yep. And so, how, how did you, what led to that deficit? So it comes from them not paying bills. So say for instance we have a board meeting and they say, well, we're going to pull this out, pull that out. If they continue to pull bills out, later on, what do you have? A deficit, because the bills still do. Just like us not paying our mortgage or not paying our light bill. We still owe the money at the end of the month. When you say they, who's they? Uh, the trustees, the board. Because okay. the board is the one that votes to pay the bills. So, uh, so you have two types of government out there. You got strong mayor, city council, then yes. you have uh, city manager, former government. So uh, mayor and the trustees control the city's finances? Well, yes, when it comes to the budget, just the budget. Right. Yes. Right. So in terms of who's deciding to pay the bill, so this deficit that you have, you're saying that's a result of the trustees not paying the city's bills? Correct. But, but do you have the resources? Yes. To pay, to pay the bills? Yes. So how's there a deficit? Because they won't pay the bills. So it's still on our books. Until we release the check and pay the bill, we still count it as a deficit. So you say so you have the money to pay the bills. Correct. You're saying your fellow trustees won't pay the bills. Correct. I give I give you prime example. Just to make me look bad, I give you prime example. My job is to govern. That's what a mayor does. I'm an executive branch, they're the legislative branch. Uh, when I go and I go get money and bring back to our community many grants, they refuse to pay things for residents. I created a roof and window program. They would not vote to pay the vendors to fix the roof and windows for our seniors and our veterans. Why? The money's there, it's in a bank account, you can see it. Why would they not pay the bill? So therefore, that program got on hold. These are things I created when I became the mayor of Dalton. But yet, people don't see your vision. It's people trying to take over government and I won't allow it. They didn't do, they didn't do it prior to the um, other mayor having it. Why did nobody do any of the things they doing to me? So. When, did, when all of this began, this uh, not paying of the city's bills? So it's funny you asked that question. That's a great question. All this turmoil started right when I became mayor. So that showed me right then and there that the plot was to remove me from office right in the beginning. I wasn't even in office for a, a good month before my board started to sit here and start to try to remove me from my seat that I earned and won by 82%, remind you, 82%, taking out an incumbent that had the seat prior to me. So when, uh, when your fellow trustees, let's say uh, Kiana Belcher, she's quoted as saying uh, mismanagement of funds. 
you're saying, no, it's not mismanagement. They're just not paying bills. That's correct. And so when you hear that from her, then what's the response? And if that's the case, have, have you released uh, publicly uh, the list of bills that, that, that they don't pay? Yes. And where is that? So that is normally on my website or it is on my uh, social media platform. And I verbally said at board meetings, you can see it when they go and they take out bills, they verbally tell you what they're taking out. Therefore, people can in, just in, add in it up. In the council meeting. In the council meeting. So you can know and you can follow exactly what bills they're not paying. And it adds up. You eventually get to a million dollars, then $2 million. And then also they have legal bills of $2 million of suing me um, for different reasons, like what you're saying to you. Who's, who sued you? Um, the, the, trustees? the trustees. The trustees. They take me to court for anything they say, right? Then we go to court and I won. I won over 24 cases. Yesterday I just got word I won another case. So I'm 25 to 0. So how is it possibly the mayor of Dalton? People got to pause and think like, dang, she keep winning. If she keep winning, we got to look at the trustees. They're the ones that are spending the money on legal bills. Their attorney, which is legislative counsel. No, for so what? So you're saying that the trustees are not paying bills. Correct. In addition, uh, by them constantly suing you, they're now uh, piling up legal bills. Correct. And that is what's also contributing to the deficit of the state. That, that's correct. And then we also had contracts, contracts that was needed to be negotiated when I came in office for police, for fire, uh, and for public works. So once we negotiate some of those contracts, of course that adds to the deficit because now you got to increase people pay. And we've done that. You got retro pay, you got all kinds of things that take into account. But what they're not telling you is what I'm telling you here. People got to state facts so people understand. Right now, just a Throw this out there, throw that out there, and no facts to back it up. What I'm trying to understand is this is a, this, look, this is not a large city, mm -hmm. okay? I spent right. six years in Chicago, uh, and so whether you're talking about Dalton, Harvey, we're not talking about large cities. Right. Uh, this is a whole lot of drama yes. for a town of 20,000 people. I agree. But it's led by one person. Who? Their, their legislative council. He wanted to take me out of my seat. Who is that? That is uh, Bert Odison. So you think uh, all of this is because uh, he wants to beat you? Yes, he wants the position of corporate counsel. Explain that. Corporate counsel is the one that run the day to day for a village. They're the one that sit next to the mayor at the board meetings, and they basically um, have all the lawsuits. So anybody that sues our village, he will be the person that go and defend it. So he, it's all about contract. It's all about a power grab. That's all it is. So is he a fellow? He's a trustee. He no no no. He's the trustees' legislative counsel. So okay. they use him to fight against me. So prior, I'll give you another example. They just had a secret squirrel meeting. What I mean by secret squirrel meeting, an illegal meeting they had at um, our park district. When they had at our park district, they- Let me they, say it's a legal meeting. Why are you calling it a legal meeting? Because they cannot go and have um, a quorum. That's the open meeting violation right. of four people. They do that every time. So now they're trying to have their own separate government. When we have board meetings, it's the first of every month. Yeah, first, first, Monday. Of all, first of all, official board meetings have to be posted. Correct. Uh, have you filed any complaints with the state yeah. attorney general? Yes. Uh, Saying they are meeting illegally? Yes, yeah, so we work, we working on that, meaning we posted it, and okay. uh, we filed it. So now we're just waiting on a response for that. So once we get the response, we will share with the public. But you can't sit here and have your own separate government. We're either going to get along or we're not. But we're not going to get along. You wait till election time, and therefore you run against me. That's how this go. But yet you put all this negativity in our village, putting everybody in danger, and I don't appreciate that. Uh, when you say putting everyone in danger, how so? Like you have people that come out from New York, people that come from all over and fly into our town just to get stories and follow us around. And then they go in our village halls, harass our residents, harass our staff. So it's become more than what people are seeing. So you're saying, so because of the attacks on you, uh, these, you had stories in the New York Post, Fox right. News, other places, uh, and you're saying all of that uh, has contributed uh, to these attacks directly uh, on you and residents. Correct. Um, you've been, um, talk about, uh, the threats that you've had to deal with. Oh, wow. Tons of threats. Um, it's in email, it's in text form, it's on voicemail. People come to our village and threaten us. Uh, people have been arrested for coming and threatening us. It's all types of things that's, it's a record of. Mm -hmm. That warrants why we need security. And it's said, because people got to understand, I am a single, um, black parent with a daughter, four-year-old, that go in and out of my house. You got people pulling up, taking pictures. You even got that trustee, that Kiana Belcher, came to my house, took pictures of my house, and then spread it out, gave it to everybody, causing me and my family to be in much danger. 
And these are the things we report it, we talk about, we tell people. It's just a vindictive against me, and I don't, I don't appreciate it at all. I just don't. Um, when you look at um, how you're being framed, uh, you are being um, called crazy, deranged, mm -hmm. uh, saying that you are uh, stealing funds. Um, you also, uh, you have a charity that, um, uh, from the Attorney General's office, is, uh, I understand they sent a cease and desist letter to your foundation? I don't know nothing about that. Um, I'm not crazy. I'm not You have a Tiffany Henry Cares, your foundation. I, so the Attorney General's office hasn't reached out to you regarding your, found, your foundation? So I want to set the record straight. I don't have a foundation. I am a supporter of anybody that's struggling with cancer. My mom had breast cancer, and I'm always push anybody that has that. If someone uses my name to push their charity, or if you say, this is Tiffany T-shirt, people gonna buy it. Because right now, consider what? Clickbait. People make money off of my name by views. So you just so say my you name. Don't a, you say you don't have a you don't have a I foundation. don't. I do not. And okay. that's why I tell everybody, go do your research. I'm not on anything. So, so when we see all of this back and forth, when we see this going back and forth, have you, um, and I've seen this happen before with school districts, um, I've seen this happen before with city councils, mm -hmm. uh, have you called in mm -hmm. the state to come mediate? Did I call in the state? Have you called? Have you, have you reached out to the state to come in and mediate what's going on here? So I've seen I've seen school boards where you have lots of drama and T Texas Education Agency, you know, comes in and deals with that. You're having these issues there. Have you reached out to state lawmakers? Have you reached out to state representatives, state senators, to say, hey, how can we resolve these issues? Because if they're not paying bills, if legal fees are piling up, mm -hmm. that's just more taxpayer money being spent. Correct. And yes, we have. So maybe two people might have reached out to us in the beginning. We was doing kumbaya. We was having meetings. And we was talking about what we have an uh, issue with one another. The sad thing is, it just reminds me of high school. It's just a he say, she say thing. Well, I don't like you because of this. or I don't understand this. It was more of that than basically taking care of the business of the town. We got elected to serve. That's it. We didn't get elected to make sure we like one another. And that's why I get upset with people that are in government. I want them to put their difference to the side and do what's right for the people. That's it. That's why I'm in this seat, because I care about my time. I won by 82%, because people know and they saw me doing the work. So, um, when you, so, so let's talk about, because I've read different stories and I'm trying to understand what they mean. So, let's talk about a meeting. Uh, your critics say you came dressed up as Nino Brown playing Bitch Better Have My Money. Did that happen? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so let me uh, clear that up so we can understand. I did not come as Nino Brown. I did a scene from Martin. Um, one thing I am, you know, I'm young. So I try to make sure I reach my young voters. You did a scene from Martin where? Martin. Was it said Dalton or Thornton this, this is Dalton. This is all of the village, oh, really. Okay, got it. All the smoke and the heat coming from my mayor or see, but they mixed the two because people don't understand the difference between the uh -huh. two. But I did come as a scene from Martin. I even made fun about it and did a skit and posted it on my TikTok just to show people my sense of humor side because at the end of the day you got to meet the voters where they are you got to meet the youth where they are and that it, it worked people pay attention to the meetings they come in they check out and see what's going on and just give you a little more clarity of it uh, we had an election and I was being funny about it. Somebody knows something, meaning somebody knew where the votes went. During the election, the night of the election we won I mean one of our candidates and then come well, like a week or two later all of a sudden, the votes disappeared. So somebody took all the votes through mail-in ballots. So I went in and I was like, somebody knows something. That's all it was. It was before my meeting, not during my meeting. And you can watch it, you'll see it was before. Everybody left, and even the people that's into it with me, everybody left, because that's all it was. It was just a sense of humor, and they took it and flipped it into this big thing that you see. So if, if that's the case, then um, are you looking at making adjustments in terms of how you operate, how you govern, mm -hmm. uh, because they're criticizing that. They're criticizing you putting up billboards. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, they're criticizing attire, you name it. Yeah. So it's sad to see that because you would think somebody would reach out and say, hey, Mayor, I want to work with you. Let's sit down and talk and go over things that I think you should improve or change. Um, a lot of people just upset because I am a trendsetter. I am a trailblazer. I am showing people what they should have done with the seats, with it ass before I took over. And as you know, I want to do the work, so I ask the lawyers what I can and what I cannot do. And when they tell me what I can do, I go and I execute. It's nothing wrong with billboards because they are, what, providing service. If it was something so wrong with billboards, um, 
people wouldn't have cut our phone lines. Like an example of other things we deal with. They cut our phone lines over at um, my supervisor position because that's what we put the billboards up. It's talking about service. Talking about transportation. They cut our phone lines. They, Who's that? They cut our phone lines. It was the uh, college, South Suburban College. Okay. And they went ahead and service in over 30 years, never been cut. But the minute I put up a billboard, the line get cut. So now when people call the phone number, how do you get services? So now you get people complaining, saying the number don't work, you got all these issues, things like that. But these are the things I'm dealing with that people don't know, the public don't see. And you don't never hear me talk about it. I just go through the motions and just deal with it. But it actually has been working. All our numbers are up about three, four times in every department, especially the food department. When which, you say our numbers are up, what numbers? The numbers. So for instance, I'll give you an example. So our food pantry. We used to feed maybe 100, 150 people a day. We now feed 500 people a day. So when people talk, they should go research the numbers of back then and then research my numbers and compare. I'm, I'm putting that together just so I can show the public because now it's all about showing people that everybody been lying this entire time doing a smear campaign. So now I'm going to show them and then now you judge because y'all all judging, meaning people out there are judging off of hearsay, false allegations, and not facts. Get facts first and then make your, your judgment. Take me through... Um what took place with the change in pay for the Thornton position. Uh, yeah, your, 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 what, what, again, what your critics say is you led an effort to cut the salary if you don't get reelected, but the salary stays the same if you are reelected. And see, that's again what I mean by research and what I say the media and everybody doing a smear campaign. It's an ordinance already on the books. They, they didn't tell you that, right? No, what's the, no, or, I'm asking, the ordinance? What's the ordinance? The ordinance is on the books. Um, my predecessor, he created that ordinance, and it's already there. That if he was to run or not run, that the salary drops. It's already there. Okay, so you're saying prior to you mm -hmm. uh, coming there, mm -hmm. that the uh, was that his decision, or was that the Thornton Township uh, or trustees' decision? Well, I, it's them as a group, because they have to vote on it. It's right. ordinance form, so yes, it was everybody's decision. So you're, saying, so you're saying that predated you? Yes, and it's there. I have the proof for it. Okay, yes. so you so, uh, so the salary is currently what? For myself, 224. So if, when there's the next election, mm -hmm. then if the current supervisor mm -hmm. is not reelected, mm -hmm. then it drops to what? 25. Um, do you know what the rationale was for that? Well, it was, like I just stated, it was already on the books, but no one did the research. They went and did this whole story of, hey, Tiffany did X, Y, Z. Now, don't get me wrong. We did cut the prior salary. It was 50, 50 cash. So, I'm sorry, cut what? 50,000. The ordinance that I'm talking about. Right. It was $50,000 that they created. Now, we cut it in half. We did do that because everybody said we, we make too much money. So we did do that. Okay, but what it was so it was cut from what? 224 to 50? No, 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 no. What, what? What I'm trying to say, what was 50? The orders that they create. Okay. Meaning the previous um, person before me. That's the, what they created before me. So it was $50,000. So no matter what or who ran against that person, it was already dropping to those numbers. It was dropping from? Whatever, whatever their salary was, which is the 224. 224. To $50,000. Okay. And then when you came in. I dropped it to $25,000. All I did was cut 50 the 50 to 25. In half. And, and why was that? Because everyone said the salary was too high. So all I did was just reduce it by half. That's it. Mm -hmm. But do you understand what I'm saying? It was already on the books. It was never going to stay to something, ever. It was always going to drop down. And you're saying that predated you? It does, yes. We have the ordinance. If you like the ordinance, we can give it to What me. is your relationship with uh, the township mm -hmm. uh, trustees? Because, again, there are two different entities here. Correct. How many trustees are you dealing with with the city of Dalton? Six. Six. How many are you dealing with with Thornton Township? Four. Okay. So do you have issues with the Thornton Township? Actually, I don't. It might be one person that might not want to agree with things there, but everybody else is on board. I have no issue like I do in Dalton. So, all, so what you're saying, most of the nearly all this drama is really happening with uh, the city of Dalton. Correct. Um, the, the trustees on Thursday mm -hmm. uh, voted for a resolution asking the FBI to investigate. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you uh, support that to help clear you, mm -hmm. or do you believe their action was wrong? So, as I stated, and I made a statement for the news, there is no subpoenas in my office and no one that we know of um, regarding the investigation. So right, we, right. Now, what I'm saying that, is, they, but they passed the resolution right. calling for a federal investigation. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm asking is, 
are you saying, hey, if I did nothing wrong, fine, y'all come and investigate, or do you believe their, the action of these trustees was improper? I think they should investigate everybody. And that way you see who is clear, period. And I will talk to this more at my board meeting on Monday. Because if you're gonna do one, do everybody. Well, first of all, if, 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 if the federal authorities, I mean, I know how federal investigations work. Mm -hmm. Once they come in, they don't look at one person. Mm -hmm. they, look, they actually examine everything. Yeah. All right, hold tight one second. I'm gonna go to a break. We'll come back. Some additional questions. My panelists with questions as well. Uh, folks, we're talking with uh, the mayor of Dalton, uh, Tiffany Henyard. Uh, you may have seen all the stories. Uh, and so we are uh, specifically talking to her about uh, the controversies happening in that um, Southern Chicago um, city, which is a whole lot, if you will, for a town of 20,000. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network back in a moment. Check this out. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are investing a record $7 billion into HBCUs. Billions for campus improvements, grants, and debt relief. Billions more for HBCUs. Endless possibilities for us. Grow your business or career with Grow with Google's wide range of online courses, digital training, and tools. Gain in-demand job skills with flexible online training programs designed to put you on the fast track to jobs in high-growth fields. No experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace. Complete the online certificate program on your own terms. Stand out to employers, get on a path to in-demand jobs, and connect with top employers who are currently hiring. Take one professional career certificate program, or all six. Earn a Google Career Certificate to prepare for a job in a high-growth field like data analytics, project management, UX design, cybersecurity, and more. All professional career certificate programs must be completed by December 31st, 2024. Scan the QR code to complete the application. There are 1,000 scholarships available. Grow with Google and J. Hood and Associates. Be job ready and qualify for in-demand jobs. We talk about the stories, politics, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. So join our community every day at 3 p.m. Eastern and let your voice be heard. Hey, we're all in this together, so let's talk about it and see what kind of trouble we can get into. It's the culture. Weekdays at 3, only on the Black Star Network. Hello, I'm Paula J. Parker. Judy Proud on the Proud Family. Louder and Prouder on Disney+. Plus. And you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. Folks, welcome back to Roland Martin Unfiltered. We're chatting with the uh, mayor of Dalton, Illinois, Tiffany Henyard. She joins me here in studio. Um, so I, I before, I'd asked you before we uh, went to the break, I talked about um, the, um, again, this, this charity. Uh, and um, the Illinois Attorney General's office, um, this is what, this is from uh, CBS affiliate there, uh, says that, uh, the accusation comes at the same time the Illinois Attorney General's office told Henry's charity multiple times in recent months to stop improperly soliciting donations because it had not registered with the state as required by law. Uh, and, and you said that's not your charity. Correct. Okay. Um, so were you ever... Um, so that was, so show, show the video here, because I'm trying to understand this here. So uh, this is a uh, video... Um, of the of you marching with the charity. So what is this? So what they're not telling you is we literally walked to Springfield to create a bill 
to help anybody that suffered from cancer, whether it's the village of Dalton, Thorn Township, and then I increased it to the state of Illinois. And that bill will help people um, by giving them $10,000. And that's a bill that we actually are initiating, and we're still working on it. When I went through the Republican states, the Republican areas, we didn't have any issue. Everybody was on board because everybody is suffering from cancer or know someone that passed or is actually going through it. So that was the whole purpose of the walk, to basically bring awareness and bring people together. That's what the whole purpose of it is. But if you had, so there were folks with signs saying Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation. Uh -huh. Who was that? What, what do you mean? It's everybody. Everybody was there. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, what is the Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation? You said it's not affiliated with you at all. Correct. Well, what is it? So someone made up a foundation. They named it after me, and they like my work that I do in the community, and it's called Tiffany and Your Cares. So we all went. Now, they, but they weren't registered. Have you contacted them and told them you can't use my name improperly? Well, my lawyer's handling a lot of that stuff, so all I can tell you is that I'm not the one on anything. That's the only thing I can tell you right now. So I'm just trying to answer to the best So you're saying there's a, there's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you? Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so true. you're not aware of any of the work that they've done, money that they've raised, anything along those lines? Correct. Okay. Um, the, uh, again, going back to your trustees, uh, they have talked about travel. So let's speak about that. When sure. you're traveling, sure. when you're traveling, are you traveling on behalf of the city of Dalton or Thornton Township? It depends. It depends on what it is. So if I'm going to um, Recon, um, Recon is a big platform for economic development where people go from all over. It's the largest in the nation, and everybody go to basically um, promote their plot of land. So you want to bring a Starbucks to town. You want to bring, for instance, Maswell's a trauma center. Mm -hmm. So things like that is what we go for. And then our job is to bring those things back, right. work on a plan. Uh, it might not happen this year. It might happen a two years out plan. And that's what people don't understand. They think it should happen right now. You went to this conference. What did you do? Right now, you could be working on a deal, and come the next term, the next mayor or the next trustee or whoever will benefit from it. That's do how you, it works. Do you have policies in your city as it relates to travel, as it relates to sure. flying first class, what types of hotels to stay in to minimize expenses for the city? Well, we have a budget. So as long as it's in the budget, you can basically go to um, any conference, any conference you no, choose. No, I understand the budget, yeah. but uh, so for instance, uh, there are, I've covered city hall, I've covered county government, yeah. where they establish, uh, where, where they say, like for instance, um, city of New Orleans mm -hmm. has a policy that uh, city officials don't fly first class. Okay. Do you have that? We do not. Do you believe you should have a policy? Because again, the critics, the critics are that you're flying first class, uh, that you're staying in four season hotels, mm -hmm. uh, high dollar hotels, uh, having what they call extravagant dinners. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are, those are your critics. Mm -hmm. are, you, are, are you as a city official, in order to make sure that uh, you'll be on reproach, looking at establishing mm -hmm. uh, a, a city policy in terms of how money is spent when traveling? Um, this is the way I feel about it. People will talk about anybody because they're not doing the work. They only talk about the people that's at the top, the ones that are doing the work. They telling you about travel. I'm in your studio right now talking about travel. What they, we should be talking about is the $15 million I bought back to my community. No, no, I understand that. No, I know, but I'm pointing it out. But, but, but we, we what, are going to travel. No, 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 no. But, but the reality is uh, this is a conversation mm -hmm. that members of Congress have to deal with, mm -hmm. uh, that mayors, city council members, county commissioners. Yeah. As I said, I've covered, I, I've covered Fort Worth City Council, uh, Travis County, County Commissioner's Court, mm -hmm. have covered city council in Dallas, uh, and this is one of the things that people often look to. They, they look at, uh, in terms of public officials, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, being being proper use of taxpayer dollars. Uh, and one of the areas, this was this happened with Kwame Kilpatrick when he was mayor of Detroit. Uh, he was highly criticized for the use of the city's credit card and how he was traveling. And so what I'm saying is, um, if you have those critics, we're not talking about uh, a large city. We're not talking about uh, a, a massive budget. Uh, and so do you believe uh, it's proper to have uh, a city standard that applies to you and all trustees and city employees that says, sure, you can fly, but you fly economy, not first class. And then if you fly, if you stay in hotels, you don't necessarily stay in Four Seasons or a hotel like that. There are Hyatt, Marriott, or whatever. And so uh, with because of the criticism, do you believe in creating that type of travel policy? I sure do. And will you do that? Yes. Okay. Um, 
One of the things that also, um, going back to your critics of your trustees, they're alleging financial improprieties. Um, when it comes to documents, um, they say that you won't turn documents over. When it comes to this, your city's budget, uh, how is that handled? Is there a city treasurer? Is there a city auditor? Uh, I mean, normal operations in the city, there are people who handle those different things. And so when you're a trustee, they can make those requests and those documents are produced. How does it work in Dalton? Exactly what you just said. Every document we produce, every statement we give them. They sued us, that's another lawsuit they sued us for. And guess what, we won. Because that's why I'm trying to explain to everybody. They just saying stuff. There's no facts to it. We go to court, we prove to the courts that we're doing our job, which is providing them with documentation. Once we give the documentation, guess what? We win our lawsuit. And we've been giving it to them through email. It's in everybody's email. Mm -hmm. I've showed that in videos. I've showed that at board meetings. And I've showed people that, hey, they said they didn't get it. They get it every single month, all the time. So, but, so but for the people who don't know, explain mm -hmm. the process, though. Okay. You got, you got mayor, you got trustees. Correct. Who are the city employees who, that's their job? So do you have a city treasurer? We, we have a, yes. We have a finance director. We have a CPA, which is our accountants. Yes, and we have auditors. We have all so of them. The fi so the finance director mm -hmm. should have the financial records uh, for all transactions with the city? Yes, and she gave them to them. That's my point. Through email. And we show that. We proved it in court. Once again, we won in court. Mm -hmm. We won. They said that, but then we showed y'all that they was lying by producing an email showing we gave them every document they needed. But they go and they put on this show for the world and then want to sit here and criticize people by saying she's doing wrong. I'm not doing wrong. I'm proving it every single time I win a court case. Again, 25 to 0. They ain't won not one court case. But they keep saying I'm doing this, I'm doing that. That's not true. Because we go to court for everything they claim I'm doing. But every time we go to court, I win. If I'm doing wrong, why am I study winning? That can't be true. That's the narrative they put out. I have two powerful seats. One, I'm the mayor. The other, I'm the supervisor. I am over 190,000 votes, whether people like it or not. That can sway an election, no matter what people say. I am an influencer. They only go out the people that can influence people's minds. And right now, I have the youth. I got everybody that loves Tiffany Henry, because I've been doing it since day one, since I was a trustee, where I did two terms, two terms. And I came out of every election victorious, every election. So now, because they can't beat me, they got to do this smear campaign to convince public opinion that I'm bad for them. So you said two elections. You were first elected in 2021? No, 2013 was my first election for trustee. Was I was a trustee. trustee. I sat where they are. Right. That's why uh, I know uh, the law. Council. Yes. Elected mayor 2021. Yes. Term is four years? Yes. Okay. Uh, plans of running for re-election? I'm running for both my seats. And yes. I'm going to win them. So, and when is the election for Thornton Township? 2025. So those elections are the same time? They are. And, and folks who don't know, the township covers how many different? 17 cities. 17 cities. Which in is the area. governed by all men, which I am over. So you already see what all the problems I have. What, what you, you mean uh, of the 17? Of the, I'm uh, over 17 towns. 17 uh, towns in, 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 a, in a township. Correct. Uh, 16 have male mayors, you're the only female. Correct. Okay. Uh, go to my panel with questions. Um, Larry, you're first. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mayor, thank you for providing, you know, answering Roland's questions and, and providing some clarification because I heard about the story too. And, and, and I was intrigued when you, when he, I realized that you were going to be on the show and have the opportunity to talk to him. And, and you know, like I said, it was important to hear your response to some of these questions. So let's talk about, you know, all, all, all politics is local. Let's talk about your constituents. And I know you just mentioned you up for re-election next year. So have you done any, any polling about, well, first question, any, any polling related to how some of the, you know, how this has impacted your, you know, how your constituents view you as in both your positions, uh, mayor and I guess overall as a supervisor. And then, um, yeah, I guess my second question is, what specific policies have you implemented to address any concerns that may, that some of the trustees have, have brought forth? Have you, and you talked about cutting this, um, you know, cutting a salary in half. What other steps have you taken to address any concerns that any trustees or any other constituents may have? Well, um, Yes, we have done polls for my community. Um, and believe it or not, a lot of people support me still, and that's the reason why they going hard. Um, right now, I love the fact that people are reading through the mess, and that's why I'm speaking on these platforms now, because I want 
to educate people and give them facts. I don't want like people just make a decision off of feelings or emotions, you know? And as it relates to policies, yes, I'm all about policies. That's one of the reasons why I'm trying to do the bill for cancer, because I know what it feels like to go through that and not have help. So when I go and I advocate for funds for whether it's my mayorship or whether it's the township, I make sure I keep the people in mind and I ask them what are their needs. And they tell me their needs and then we go and we advocate for it. And thank you so much for all those that helped and supported it. Uh, we come back and we create budgets and we create programs. We gave over 80 people um, with kids, youth, scholarships, 80 and they got up to $2,500. We also did 429 kids for Stop the Bleed and um, CPR, because you know about all the shootings and things that's going on in communities. These are things that people don't talk about, the real work, the real things that I actually do in my communities, and I'm gonna keep on advocating for that. So yes, to your question. Jacqueline. Yes, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, what I wanted to ask uh, specifically is, um, different than his question is that regardless of the outcome, if the FBI is pursuing an investigation and you do get some vindication as it relates to their investigation, but how do you go about restoring public trust, right? The public trust, because whenever, you know, it calls for all of these different allegations and then you're on national news, I mean, that's essentially what you've lost, right? Mm -hmm. Is the public trust. And so, how are you going to gain that back? In addition to that, uh, with all of these lawsuits, 26 lawsuits sounds exhausting, okay, for the amount of time that you've been in office. And frankly, um, have you instituted any countersuing measures or any other legal measures to prevent this cycle from continuing? Yes. Two folds. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, um, I'll start backwards. So, yes, we're countersuing um, the Board of Trustees uh, for all the illegal things that they do do. And we're working on that. And you will hear me speak to that at my board meeting on Monday um, because it said that people have allowed the outside to interfere with the day to day operation of our village. And people are convinced, um, convincing, I would say, certain individuals that. Uh, both my titles are one, and it's not. I have one title as supervisor, one title as uh, mayor. So it's two different budgets, two different boards, and we do two different things. And I just want the world and everybody to understand how we're going to move forward as it relates to public trust. That's why I'm speaking today on Rowan's platform, and I appreciate him for giving me the opportunity to do so, because it is only one-sided narratives out there. And I want the world to know uh, my heart and my passion for community, because I don't know nobody that will sit in a seat, take all the smoke that I take, be in the fire, and still keep pushing. A lot of people would have quit. A lot of people would have um, did worse off things than this. And I choose to stay prayed up, stay focused. I let God lead my steps. And I love everybody that be praying for me and sending me uplifting quotes and things like that. So I need that because I'm still human and I'm still going through the emotions, but I'm telling my story. I'm telling my truth and I'm stating it with facts. I'm not just out here lip boxing is what I call it. I'm literally showing you the proof. So now it's up to that resident or that person to choose what they believe or what they don't believe. Mustafa. Well, Mayor Henry, uh, thank you for being here. Um, also, thank you for being a young mayor uh, because we need more. Yes. You know, my question is, you, you've garnered a lot of wisdom probably through the trials and tribulations that you have went through to date. Um, looking back, um, would there be anything that you would do differently in the beginning of your administration uh, to help to be able to navigate some of the situations or hopefully even, you know, eliminate some of these challenges that have been put in front of you? Yes, I will watch the people I choose to put on my ticket. Uh, because you never know. People will play nice, act like they for you and your vision, run on that vision, and then get in and do the opposite of what we told the people. Our job is to make sure we deliver what we told the people we was going to do. If we said we're going to fix the town, improve the town, increase economic development, increase the police department, uplift areas, uh, uplift morale, we should do that. 
And that's what I want people to do today. I want people to call uh, elected officials out on that mess. It's a lot of people that talk the talk but can't walk the walk. The difference with me and them is I run circles around everybody that was before me. I put in the work day in, day night, day out, and I don't stop. I don't stay because I really love what I do. This is not a job to me. This is a passion I'm asked. And you got to have a heart for people in order to stay in this because a lot of people, as I stated before, would have been quick. Uh, how do you separate the two jobs? Uh, so when I was talking about, for instance, when I mentioned uh, the criticism regarding security detail, uh, do you have established hours that this is when I'm doing the city of Dalton work, and when that stops, uh, does your detail then go away? Because if you're doing Thornton's work, so I, 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 you got two different jobs, uh, and so how do you deal with that to make sure that the taxpayers of Dolgen aren't paying for things when you're doing stuff for Thornton Township. Well, what people don't understand is that your security go wherever you go. So wherever I go, the security goes, because that's how the threats come. Sometimes it could be coming out of Village Hall. I'll give you an example. Uh, when we was trying to do Kumbaya, me and my board, this is when I first got in office, we had two individuals jump out the bushes on us. The bushes. When I say Myself and um, I'm going to say Trustee Stan Brown uh, was left to defend ourselves. My entire board ran, all of them. The men, the women, everybody ran, got in the car. We was left defending against this individual. Come to find out, five minutes later, call somebody else. This man pull up in a raper man van, jumps out, and start bickering with us. And then you had one trustee filming, filming in their car. In their car. I didn't have no security. I didn't have anything when I first started. That's how bad it's gotten. So you're saying that, look, uh, because you are the mayor and these threats uh, continue, mm -hmm. uh, then, um, then, then you require that detail at all times. So, so when your critics, like former police chiefs, say, oh, there was ext uh, massive overtime bills uh, and they were accompanying her everywhere, multiple people, uh, you say, because of those threats. Yeah, it's plenty of threats. We got it documented. So it's not we're making it up. It's certain things that we have been showing the public, telling the public, but it's up to people on what they believe. Have you also, uh, have you also filed anything with the state police? Yes, we have. With and what several, is that? several different agencies. We give them all the documents, um, which I think you have some of them, and we show them the threats. We show them the arrests. We have all kinds of things that go on um, that the public don't even know about um, as relates to threats to even staff. That's how bad it's gotten. People just pull up the village hall and come in and threaten. What they do to anybody? They came to work for a job. And it's sad because there's so many shootings and things going on. People's mental is off. So you have to be secured. If you're not, then anything can happen. So I hate that people looking at it so lightly, like they don't see what's going on. Look what just happened in that church. You don't know when is when. You don't you mean know. You Lakewood Church in Houston? Yes. It's sad. So what do we do? And it's said that we have to debate over it when it's already budgeted for, when it's already in the CBA. It's already there. So why are we having a conversation about something that's already allotted, something that already was done in the past? When you mentioned $15,000 grants uh, brought to the city, um, what, does that, what does that involve? So um, it's 15 million overall, sorry, 15 but it's 9.2 million. for a township, 6.8 for Dalton. So basically, what I do is I'm sorry, I, I'm again, again, that's what yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. why I have to separate. Yeah. So when you said 15 million, that's yeah. not just for Dalton. Correct. That's also for the township. Correct. And, and, and so, that's the uh, we, we, so again, talking about your travel, uh, what have you brought in, uh, and what have we brought in for the city? Okay. Separate from the township. The the money. What do you want? Yes. To, what do you got? 6.8. It's for, for, for the village. For the village. For the village of Dalton. Got it. So basically, that's in our budget, which the board tried to take it out at the last board meeting. The attorneys had to tell them, you got to put it in there because that, the that's money comes out. That's additional resources that you brought into the city. Into, into my city, Dalton. From, from what? State, federal? Yes. What? Okay. Yes. Yes. So now you just wait till the money trickle down. Uh, we got a million dollars that should hit in the next month. For? For, um, what is it? Reimbursement. It's for reimbursement. So it's all kinds of ways you get money, but you have to be in the room. You have to be in the place. People are always talk, but if you never leave this space, how do you know what's out there? How do you know what to get and come back and recreate it in your space? That's what I do. I go and I see what other towns are doing, and I go and sometimes I might mimic and I might put my own sauce on it. 
And what I mean by my own sauce, I might use my creative vision and say, okay, they, they had um, slide right here. I might want to do a slide, but a water, a water slide. Or I might want to do a, a run-through slide. Like, it's up to you. That's what the youth is about. And I think that's what the problem is. Um, our community, our nation, they need hope. They need something to believe in. I am the beacon of life of the soft land. I will redevelop the soft land no matter what they say. They can keep on talking. And throughout the whole controversy, I've still been doing that. I've been building um, an ice skating rink, a roller skating rink, outdoor, bigger than Rockefellers. Did I get any news play on that? Nothing, nothing. It can't be, and that's why I want people to ask themselves, how is it that the news just write all negative things about this woman? All negative. She did not one thing correct, not one. That's how you know when things are going left. That's how you know when everybody hands involved. Because I do a lot of positive things. I got a mental health tour that we go into the schools and we talk directly to the kids. And because I look like them, because I can go on their level and I dance with them, talk to them, because I do those things, they talk to me back and they tell me they're dealing with mental illness. And I've gotten several families help by just going into the school, doing what I do, being me, helping people but they don't tell y'all that. But I film it and I broadcast it on our social medias, on our websites, and I talk about it in my mayor's report at my board meetings. Cause I want people to see what it is I do. Judge me for the work. Cause no matter what, my work speaks for itself. They can say whatever, but my work gonna speak. Speaking of that, uh, you announced uh, you're launching um, something on Spotify and YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, you got time for that? Between being the mayor of a city and then also supervisor, you got time for that? <laughs> well, yes, I do because it's basically just filming my life in a sense. It's me talking to you, for instance, answering questions, and all we're doing is just putting it in a platform like you have here so people can learn for themselves, get the uh, evidence, because all we're going to do is upload what I'm saying to you, whether it's the ordinance, whatever they're talking about, and prove it to them. Like I do in my board meetings, I show a slideshow about this what they said, but here's the truth. Do you, do you believe, and, and have you thought about it? Um, if you look back at things that you've done, and you mentioned the skit at the board meeting, mm -hmm. do you believe that you've made some mistakes? Do you we believe that, you know, do, um, do you think that you are too flashy, too, out, uh, too, um, um, outspoken. No, I won't say outspoken because first of all, I ain't got a problem with outspoken. Okay. Uh, but 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 I also understand the reality of politics mm -hmm. and how people um, perceive politicians. Yeah. And uh, who, who and some believe they, they they might be doing too much. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is no, this is who I am. So therefore, I'm reaching a whole new audience. Correct. Uh, but have you thought about things that you've done since you've been mayor where you say, you know what, I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not perfect. Nobody is. We human beings. I tell people that all day long. But what I will say, I want people to just love on people. I can miss me with the mess. And we're going to lay it to rest today. And that's why I'm here to say, hey, let's do better. And all I can do is do this when I have conversations with the mayor. And I ask them, how do you feel, meaning the residents? Because they are my, my, um, the, my voters. They're the ones that I have to answer to. And they'll tell me, like how you're asking, do you think you should have did this different? Yes, a lot of things I should have done different or could have done different. But guess what? You have to try. And then when you try and it's a mistake, guess what? It's not too late. That's why I talk to the kids. Now you go and you fix it. What matters is how you come out of it. Because we're going to go through it, but we need to grow through it. And I tell my kids this all the time, and they are understanding that. It's almost like second chance programs, things of that nature. Yeah, your kid made a mistake, because you don't know who it could be. It could be your kid. Your kid could be at the wrong place, wrong time, and get the same sentence as somebody else. But are you going to throw your baby away? No, because the kids come right back in our communities that live with grandma, grandma, granddad, everybody that's in that community, and they need a job. So how do we help them? We can't throw them away because they made a mistake. That's called life. It's called testimony. It's a test. So you've got all this dissension, all this rancor, you've got the lawsuits going back and forth, mm -hmm. all it's doing is do wasting time, money, energy. Correct. How do you resolve this issue with, this with your trustees? 2025. That's a whole year. <laughs> it's a whole year. But I lasted three years of all this back and forth, and I think the residents are tired of it, and I think they see it for what it is. Smear campaign. All right. Uh, Mayor Henry, we appreciate it. Uh, and uh, we'll see uh, what happens next uh, in this ongoing saga. Okay. All right, Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. All right. Gotta go to a break. We'll be right back. Roland Martin Unfiltered right here.
you heard why we're marching, and, and it's really a launch. It's not even a march. We're launching That's right. a 42-week campaign march, the second at 10 o'clock in Raleigh and 33 other state capitals right. and the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a historic move to mobilize mm -hmm. the most powerful untapped block of voters in this country, That's right. poor and low wealth voters, mm -hmm. who make up 87 million votes. Mm -hmm. And it's never been tried before. Never been tried before in history. At the same time, the same message, same focus. And when that power turns loose, yes. they will not be able to figure out the political calculus. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shake things up. I'm ready to get up out of the valley. I'm ready for God to put his spirit on us. I'm ready to be used to change this nation. And what we're saying is, can't we come together? Can't we come together around an agenda? You ain't got to like everything about Reverend Barber. You don't have to like everything about St. Greer. You don't have to like everything about Long Choir. But can we come together and say, it's time to end poverty as the fourth leading cause of death? It's time to have $15 and a living wage indexed with inflation. So every time inflation goes up, the minimum wage goes up. It's time to have health care for all. It's time to fully fund public education. Can't we come together? It's time to protect women's right to women's health. It's time, it's time to have affordable housing for everybody. It's time to stop the proliferation of guns. Ain't no way folk ought to be able to have more guns than they have food, more guns than they have meat on their table. That makes no sense. Isn't it time for division to be ended and love to take over? Can't we organize around that? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't need to like everything about you, but can't we organize for power? Can't we stand for justice? Can't we love everybody for just a little while? Can't we come out of the valley? Talk about blackness and what happens in black culture. We're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100,000, so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to PO Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Coming up on the next Black Tape, a conversation with Professor Howard W. French on his new book, Born in Blackness, covering 600 years of global African history and helping us understand how the world we know today is a gift from black people. There could have been no West without Africa and Africa. That's on the next Black Table with me, Greg Carr, only on the Black Star Network. Hey, it's John Murray, the executive producer of the new Sherry Shepard Talk Show. This is your boy, Earthquake. And you're tuned in to Roland Martin Unfiltered. <laughs> Jason House is a trustee of the city of Dalton. He joins us right now, trustee Dalton. Trustee House, glad to have you here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, what is at the root of this dissension between the, these trustees and your mayor, Tiffany Henyard? Well, thank you very much, first and foremost, for having me. And I would say the, the root of the 
tension or the disagreements that we have is really just the board trying to ask for information that we are not receiving. And, um, and we're getting a lot of complaints from the community, the residents, the business community, and many things that um, the mayor will and will verbally tell you is being done is just not happening. Uh, like, so what? It's unfortunate. like what? Like uh, what? For example, the bills that we're talking about, we have not gotten a financial report since September of 2023. So okay. we're look, talking four or five months. That has not been given. Here's, here's, uh, here's, 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 here's where I'm confused. Because again, I've covered yeah. city council, I've covered county government, okay? Uh, and that is, if you have city staff, and if the board of trustee votes for something, how are you not getting it from city staff? Who, who is controlling that? Uh, all the staff report directly to the mayor's office. And it's been documented by many former employees, and the village has many lawsuits pending right now because these because if you do not follow the mayor's directive, then you will be disciplined. You'll be either yelled at, terminated, and the, and that discipline extends to if you provide documentation to the board. No, 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 um, no, 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 no here, here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. If if, yes. the, if the trustees, if look, majority rules. If the trustees vote, I mean, you just voted on a resolution for the FBI to come in. If the trustees, if the trustees vote ordering uh, the city auditor or the city treasurer or the city finance director uh, to turn over a financial report by a certain date, then that person is obligated to do so because the, the, the board has voted. So are you saying that has that been done and have, and have those individuals defied the board of trustees? Absolutely. That has been done and they, do, and the, the, they are defying the board of trustees and they're doing so at the mayor's instruction. I, the employees are, I believe they're, all, they're good employees and they want to do their job and their job is the mayor is instructing them do not, do not comply. And that's forcing them to violate the ordinance and the wishes of the board. What do you say when Mayor Henry says y'all have taken her to court and she's won every time? There, that's been an exaggeration. There have not been 24 cases. One, the primary case that she referenced, uh, talking about failure to provide documentation to the board, is still pending in court. That is going back into court uh, early March. So, and that, then so, be so, so that's one case. How many times has the have, have, how many times have the trustees taken the mayor to court? We have about five cases. Three are ongoing. Two of them, to my knowledge, two of them, she was successful. Okay. So the trustees have sued her on five separate occasions. Correct. Okay. Um, and um, when she says that the collective bargaining agreement states that uh, security detail, that is a part of that, uh, I take it you've seen that CBA? I have seen the CBA. And what, uh, and what does it say? The CBA does allow for a mayor to have uh, reasonable security and does not allow for overtime to ex to exhaust the, the village's budget. It does not allow for the uses that are being done. So, and so, if I may so, take so when you say, well, well, hold on one second. So when you say reasonable, does the CBA stipulate that the mayor should have two security officers, three, four, five, or is it there, un or is it undefined? I did not see a definition. However, it does stipulate that overtime hours cannot be utilized, which is what's happening in this case. Okay, so if the CBA states that, uh, so again, I just want to be correct. You're saying that the CBA states that uh, the, uh, the police officers uh, who are on the mayor's detail cannot accrue overtime. Y'all are saying that is happening. Yeah, that is absolutely happening. And if I may take that a step further, um, the, the core of the issue that the, that the board has, or the, the board majority, is that the village cannot afford this, this luxury that is going on right now. In previous years, our village has never had over $600,000 worth of overtime. And this past year, we had $1.6 million of overtime. And that, so and, and, that, and that, and that hold up, that $1.6 million overtime, was that solely for police? Yes. The primary cause of that overtime was because of the police, because of the security detail, and those officers are traveling outside of the village of Dalton. That's not acceptable. And have y'all received that breakdown of those overtime hours? So when you say the 1.6 million, you're saying that is that 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 1.6 million 
all of it or most of it is tied to her security detail? Uh, most of it is tied to the security detail. Uh, as mentioned, we do not get the exact documentation that we asked for. However, when I can, I can look at the trends, and when I look at the trends from 2017 all the way to 2022, we never exceeded $600,000 of, of overtime. So, no. And, go, yes, ahead. Sir. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, in this previous, in this past year, $1.6 million spent in overtime. Uh, following the trends, following the analysis and the logic, uh, the million dollars had the only the only change in the department has been the security detail. That's it. So no additional police officers, no increase in the police force. Correct. Uh, no additional. We every year we put just as we did this year, we add 10 additional officers into the budget because we know the importance of officers being on the street. We know the importance of trying to make sure we don't wear these officers out. And I think you um, correctly mentioned the former police chiefs. Uh, statements because he was in the prime position to identify what's going on. So, I mean, even from his mouth, it's identified it that their manpower was stretched. The village really is at, is really having uh, difficulties, and those officers work very, very hard, and it becomes even more critical when, you, when you're down manpower because the officers are the security details being used in ways that it shouldn't. The mayor said that the reason Dalton has a deficit it's because the trustees are not paying their bills. How do you, what do you say? Uh, that is completely uh, false. Um, so, 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 so when it, she says the trustees go through and pull out certain bills they do not pay, uh, she, said, she said that the money's there to pay the city's bills, but you, the trustees, are not paying the bills. Uh, and that is completely false. We, um, the, the money, and at every meeting we ask, is the money there? And the response will be yes. After the meeting is over with, I have more than 15 emails from vendors who will call me, vendors that have been approved. Uh, the most recent one that made news was the police cars getting ready to be repossessed. The board approved that May of 2023. Eight months later, we get messages that we're behind on payments, haven't done it. And then to make it even worse, I'll forward that to the administration. It's not for political fodder. We forward that to the administration seeking payment. We're told it's taken care of, and one week later, we get a demand letter for repossession of the vehicles. So, Those so, are the types of... So, it, he, so here's where... Here's, I'm sorry. Here's where I, I, I'm, I'm... This is just simply where I'm confused. What is the hierarchy of the city? I get strong mayor, city council. I get that. Uh, but who is the top city administrator? Uh, the village administrator is the one that should run the day-to-day -day operations of the village, and they are appointed directly by the mayor's office. Gotcha. Who is that? The village administrator's name is Keith Freeman. Okay, that's the village administrator, okay? Correct. A appointed by the mayor. But Correct. doesn't that person answer to the council? So when you're in a council meeting, and again, I, I, I just spent way too much time covering city councils. Do you not call him to the table and ask the series of questions in the council meeting? Uh, currently, no. When they first came on board, we would do that. And ultimately, Dalton has become known for the, uh, the banter and the back and forth. So because as a result of that, we try prior to the meetings to send emails. We try our, our conversations. But if we try to, in our meeting, trying to call the administrator or some other staff to the to the table, we are met with resistance and over-talking directly from the mayor. Okay. And then uh, that uh, okay. becomes but, a right. side show that um, makes the village look bad. Okay, but 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 again, what what I, what what I, what I'm trying to understand and it's and I'm coming from the perspective of somebody who mm -hmm. has covered Fort Worth, Austin, Dallas, Houston, Chicago, city councils, county yes. government, state legislature, Congress. This is a town of 20,000 people. All right? Yes, sir. So this, this ain't, I mean, no disrespect to Dalton. This is small. And what I'm trying, to under, I'm trying to understand, if you have a city administrator and you got a council meeting coming up, how do the trustees not say, and I'm say, okay, on the agenda, city administrator so-and-so, um, 
are, are, th are these bills being paid? Is this being handled? And he has to answer to that. If there are lawsuits, I've seen this happen before, okay, they call the city, the city lawyer in, and they ask them questions. So I'm, I'm not understanding why those things don't happen, so that way the public actually gets to hear the responses of the people they're paying. So, and if I may, so thank you, and I agree with you, especially for a town of this size, uh, but it really shouldn't be this difficult. Uh, the reality of what happens is when the board calls to question whether it be the administrator, the finance director, the mayor intercedes in that answer. Uh, so this is be it's run, it, it's really being pushed uh, to from the mayor's standpoint because she wants to control the narrative. She does not allow those individuals. She instructs them, do not answer the question. I'm going to answer this. You got your answer. Uh, she'll overtalk and bang the gavel to try to really make sure that the the discussion that should happen in rational communities does not occur. And I think, it, and, and many people watching tune in, we have a board meeting, our council meetings are watched by 15, 20,000 people. A town of our size should never have that. I mean, most board meetings should be to the point, but, they, but the people have picked up on and recognized that unfortunately, uh, the mayor's office really tries to dominate the meeting, really goes in and insults board members, insults uh, seniors, insults the clerk's office. Uh, and and it, it's become a sideshow that's really made us look bad. So when is the next city council meeting? Uh, it is next Monday. I believe that's March 4th. Okay, next city council meeting is next Monday. Okay, so you, you listen to what the mayor said here. Um... What do you and others plan to do at Monday's council meeting? Uh, we plan to show up to the meeting. We will go through the agenda and we will do our best to handle it with civility and with dignity. Um, when the challenge comes at the board meeting, we are presented with the same bills repeatedly that the board has not agreed to pay. And those bills are restaurants, flat, flights and hotels, for the mayor's office that the village cannot afford. So once it gets to the point that we're looking at bills that the board didn't approve, bills that were not in the but in the budget, then we refuse to pay those bills and they keep coming up. And once we refuse, then the mayor begin the mayor begins ins hurling insults and then trying to also demand that the department heads join in and create a uh, and create a dynamic trying to uh, play politics and blame the board for issues that she's created. How do y'all resolve this? She says 2025. How in the hell do you go through another year of this back and forth? Um, it, it's, it's unfortunate. And, uh, and I know in her mind she's made up that it has to be in 2025. Uh, from the board side, it's, uh, the door is always open to real, realistic conversation and truthful answers that will bring us to a conclusion. Uh, God willing, that'll happen before 2025. But however, if her mentality says it can only be resolved my way, then the board will show up and we will make the decisions, that the hard decisions that we need to, to try to keep the budget in line. And we further, a lot of things that we promote or put out there, we also put out, we put out video, we have the Dalton Trustees YouTube page that has a wealth of information and it shows a lot of the, of the receipts. And we do that as our response, our fiducial responsibility to the residents to make sure they are aware of what's going on. Um, I mean, imagine if you were a resident and the police cars actually got repossessed and nobody said anything. That's our responsibility to make sure that the community knows what's going on. So it would be nice if we were, if there were the ability for everybody to sit down at the table and say, we don't need to do another year of this. That would be ideal. It would be hopeful. And, um, but, and if not, the board has a responsibility to call out things that we don't see that are going properly. All right. Well, we'll see what happens uh, on Monday. Uh, frankly, there's no reason in the world, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that this should be as difficult. <coughs> I mean, I've seen council members not get along with the mayor. This is, this is nuts. Yes, sir. <coughs> Trustee House, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, we'll be back in a moment. For the last 15, or maybe 16 years, 18 years, I'll say, since I, when I moved to L.A., I hadn't had a break. I hadn't had a vacation. Probably a week vacation here and there. Right. This year, after I got finished doing Queen Sugar and we wrapped it up, 
because I knew I had two TV shows coming on at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a little break. So I've been on break for the first time, and I can afford it. Praise right. God. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I can afford it. I'm like, I can right. sit back and ain't got nothing to worry about, man. But this was the first time in almost in, in two decades wow. that I've actually had time to sit back wow. and, and, and smell the roses. <laughs> Check this out. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are investing a record $7 billion into HBCUs. Billions for campus improvements, grants, and debt relief. Billions more for HBCUs. Endless possibilities for us. Hi, I am Tommy Davidson. I play Oscar on Proud Family, Louder and Prouder. I don't say, I don't play Sammy, but I could. Or I don't play Obama, but I could. I don't do Stallone, but I could do all that. And I am here with Roland Martin on Unfiltered. All right, folks, um, we go from the craziness in Dalton, Illinois, to the absolute nuttiness in Tennessee. You might remember last year, House Republicans, they booted two black state reps, Representative Justin Jones, Representative Justin Pearson, because of their involvement in a protest in the well. Well, they kicked them out. They didn't kick out Representative Gloria Johnson. They then were reelected in Memphis and Nashville. Now these Republicans in the House have moved a bill that will bar cities from reelecting state reps who get expelled. What? How do you? It's a representative government. It's a republic. Join me now from Nashville, Representative Justin Pearson. I, I, I it's, it's mind boggling. Uh, I mean, bottom line is, these white Republicans can't stand you two black dudes. No, that is, that is the bottom line. And the reality is they are doing everything within their power to make it very clear that they only want for white supremacy, racism, white nationalism to rule and to govern in our state. The reality is we were unjustly expelled due to those very ideologies that these folks espouse and that they continue to show on a daily basis in the legislation that they put forward. But after that unjust expulsion, both of our communities unanimously sent us back to serve our districts because they knew it was an unjust expulsion. They knew that this was ridiculousness supported by these white supremacists in the state house like Cameron Sexton and William Lambert. And they wanted for us to be able to continue to serve our 
our community and our districts. And then we were elected overwhelmingly in Shelby County and District 86. We were elected with 94 percent of the vote to continue the work of advocacy of lifting the voices of people in our community. But you can tell that this Republican majority is more focused on how to retaliate against us and show their racism through legislation and policy than actually fix the problem that took us to the well in the first place, which was the issue of gun violence and the need for us to use all of our power to actually remedy the epidemic that is hurting us around this country and that is the number one killer of children in the state of Tennessee. But instead of focusing on that problem and solving the epidemic, we are seeing them passing retaliatory measures and more hurtful and harmful legislation targeted at myself, at Representative Jones, and at our communities. I mean... These are the same people who tried, who got mad because Representative Jones wouldn't do the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. And he was saying, because y'all won't move on gun control. Mm -hmm. And again, last I checked, protest is in the First Amendment, but that come before the Second that's right. Uh, the chronological order would tell you that the founders, as flawed as they were, had something right about the freedom of speech, the right to protest, the right to use our voices to elevate the issues that matter in our community. And if we are to have a republic and a constitutional democratic republic, we have to have people who are in positions of power who do protest when things are wrong. Even in the Tennessee state constitution, it, it argues and says that no people should be slavish to those who are in positions of power. And instead of what of, instead of us resisting that and seeing people to fight for the beliefs of a democracy and for the beliefs of a republic, we are seeing folks who are willingly trying to be overseers over the black representatives, over the majority black county, the majority black city where I come from and where I represent. And Representative Jones has every right to use his voice in the ways that he believes it matters and and also to not pledge uh, to the flag if that is what he so chooses. So many people want to talk about it being a free country, and then you see their hypocrisy when it comes to black people trying to claim freedom. They want to talk about the need for limited government, but then when it comes to taking away the rights of government to be able to reinstate elected representatives who are being unjustly expelled, they, they don't care about limited government anymore. The hypocrisy and the racism within the Republican Party is a snake eating its own tail. And here in, in Tennessee, in Nashville, in the Tennessee General Assembly, it is happening day after day how the fomenting of this culture war is continuing to be exacerbated in legislation and policy. And Roland, the, the most significant problem that I have with this Republican Party isn't just that they are filled with white supremacists, isn't just that they're filled with racists, it is that they have power. And that is the problem. It is one of our elders said, it isn't just a problem for someone to have the ideology of wanting to lynch me. It's that they have the power to do so. And in the Tennessee General Assembly, it is not just that they have the ideologies of hatred and of xenophobia and of racism and of homophobia. homophobia. They have the power to do it. And so yesterday, they passed a bill banning LGBTQIA flags. Yesterday, they passed a resolution that was xenophobic, blaming the fentanyl crisis and blaming all border crossings on illegal immigrants and saying that uh, they are le the leading cause of rapes and murders in our country. They have power and they are wielding it in ways that are destructive to our democracy. And so we all need to be paying attention at what is happening here because the erosion happening in Tennessee, the erosion happening in the, the General Assembly is indicative of what is going to happen at the national level if we continue down this path with the leadership of the, of the ex-president who has 91 indictments to his name. That's whose who's, uh, vision they are living into, and that is the work that they are doing at the state level. So we have to continue to be vigorous and determinate in making sure that the ideals that we care about of our freedom, of our liberty, of justice, that we are unwavering in that commitment. And, and I really do hope, I, I, I was at the University of Tennessee, Martin, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and, and I really do hope that the white folks in Tennessee wake the hell up and realize that they are getting bulldozed by a bunch of crazed, deranged individuals. Uh, I'm, I've been following the Tennessee holler and this, this voucher <laughs> scam uh, bill that the governor is trying to push through. Uh, and look, and I'm somebody who supports school choice, uh, but I also know BS bills when I see it. Uh, and what these people are doing, they can't stand criticism. They can't stand being called out. They can't stand being challenged. Uh, look, they even changed the damn rules to now you got to get an exactly. invitation to even show up at the state capitol when I, I'm a native of a Texan. I can, I can go to Austin and literally walk into the building and sit in the gallery. I don't have to get permission. And so <laughs> they, these, these white conservative Republicans in Tennessee, they do not want any pushback on anything mm -hmm. that they do. 
That's exactly right. They hate dissent. All they want is for you to be happy to be in the room. They don't want you to discuss the issues. They don't want to have meaningful debates. They do not care about the maintenance of our democracy or the upholding of the principles and the values that make our country in so many ways uh, become what it can be through advocacy and through the work of those who protest and those who march and those who push for it to be better. They want to silence that. They, they want that to, to shut that down. And the reality is they are livid that, and they have vitriol against myself and Representative Jones because they hate that too young, black, and gifted folks keep speaking up and standing up, not just for ourselves, but standing up and speaking up on behalf of our families, on behalf of our constituencies, who know that things can be better and that things should be better. And what we are doing uh, here in Tennessee and, and, and what we are building is a movement for justice rooted in love. And that movement is multiracial. That movement is intergenerational. That movement is multi-socioeconomic because what we are starting to realize, and I think a lot of our white brothers, sisters, and siblings are starting to realize what Heather McGee calls the solidarity dividend, that we are all being negatively impacted by these institutions. We are all being negatively impacted by this racism. We are all being negatively impacted by white supremacy. And if we do not use all the power that we have to break these shackles together, it will continue to persist. And what they are afraid of and what they are seeing every time we speak up and we get called out of order, every time that we try and speak in committee and they call the question to try and silence debate, what they see is that movement building and that we are not going to be silent and we are not going to be silenced. And what we know and what they know is that it is more of us than them. Listen, the only reason they have the positions that they do now is because they have gerrymandered our state into this much more conservative and much more uh, racist General Assembly than the state actually is. Over 70% of people want to see gun violence prevention legislation. Over 70% of people across our state want to see more access to health care for women and for abortion rights to be restored. Our state is more progressive than our General Assembly because of the way that they're making the rules. And to your point, th this is how white supremacy works. They, 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 they do evil things, and then they make rules that make the evil thing now uh, the law or now the, the, the rule that you have to follow, but it doesn't make it right. They are morally bankrupt in every action that they are taking because it's being taken on behalf of special interests like the National Rifle Association is being taken on behalf of people who only want to continue the degradation of black communities, of indigenous communities and communities of color. Every action that they take is about hurting poor folks, not about helping. And we have a responsibility as people who have sworn an oath to the Constitution of Tennessee and of the United States of America to do everything in our power to resist the evil that we are seeing. They went so far yesterday as to pass an unconstitutional law, even after our own lawyers said that it was unconstitutional. That's what we're up against. And this is a fight that is going to require our attention, our intention, and our efforts to change the trajectory of our state. Uh, Larry. Yeah, uh, Representative Pearson, first of all, I appreciate, you know, your consistency and your bravery uh, in the state of Tennessee, and, and you're facing an onslaught, and everyone throughout the country sees it. So, we, we appreciate you. I want to say that, first of all. Uh, second of all, I think, if I remember correctly, when you guys were initially ex expelled, that there was a lawsuit that was filed. And if that's the case, it, can you give me an update? And then secondly, this recent bill, in terms of really, you know, for those individuals who supposedly believe in, uh, believe in small government, uh, <laughs> you know, passed this legislation that will prevent, you know, like I said, jurisdictions from, you know, those who were expelled from bringing those individuals back. And I'm curious to what was some of the conversation like when you were debating this bill about why this bill was was needed Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing, Representative Jones, he filed uh, a lawsuit that is still ongoing, uh, but that lifts up so many equal protection issues with our expulsions, including that the two youngest black lawmakers in the state of Tennessee were expelled, but our colleague and friend Gloria Johnson, who is white, was not. Uh, that we are consistently called out of order, our mics are consistently cut off, and we are consistently mistreated by the Republican parties in the state of Tennessee, and that that is an equal protection issue because we are not receiving the same protections that our people and, and people across the aisle are getting. The discussion uh, related to the bill yesterday was uh, pretty significant. I had several amendments uh, up uh, uh, that I wanted to attach to this, and one of them in particular had to do with people uh, may not be able to be returned by their local government if they have committed a crime. 
such as sexual assault. Last year, uh, Scotty Campbell, who voted to expel all three of us, actually committed sexual assault and later resigned. We said, unless you committed domestic abuse, uh, Representative Hawk has abused his wife uh, and, and, was, and was brought before the court because of it. Uh, unless you've assaulted a person, uh, a leader in the Republican Party, Chairman Jeremy Faison, actually pants a referee at his kid's sporting event, and he is now the third in command of the Republican Party in the state of Tennessee. Now, if people commit crimes where they physically harm people, if people commit crimes of abusing other folks, then maybe they shouldn't be expelled. But if we are standing up and speaking up on behalf of children who have been killed due to an AR-15, if we are standing and speaking up on behalf of our community, where in Memphis there were 398 homicides and many of those gun violence, including my classmate Larry Thorne, we deserve to be set back by our elected body. We committed no crime. Crime. But people who have actually committed crimes still serve in the General Assembly today and have never been brought up on any charges by this body because it's not about the actions that were taken. It's about who took the actions. It is about what we look like. It is about what we stand for. And it's about who we represent and what we represent uh, to our communities, which is more justice, which is the elevation of black folks, which is the elevation of voices that have been pushed to the periphery for far too long. Jack well. Um, kudos um, to you, Representative Pearson, and to Representative Jones for protesting and standing up for what you believe in, um, despite the ramifications that um, may come as a result of that. Um, just watching and hearing this, I'm, I'm here in Georgia, and so I, I'm sure that a lot of the public is just wondering, that's tuning in tonight, how, of course, we know that we have to exercise our right to vote, right? Voting matters. But how else can the public, um, what things do we need to do as a culture, as a community that can further assist you guys, that can further assist um, fighting these injustices, um, just so that we are able collectively to support you and, and push you forward? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the question. Look, Black people, are the ones who hold Americans, America's democracy. Black people are the ones who continue to be the beacon of light, the beacon of hope for this constitutional democratic republic. Uh, if it were not for black people, we would not have won the Civil War. If it were not for black people, civil rights being extended to all people across this country would not have existed. If it were not for black people, we wouldn't be having conversations about there being a country in order for us to save. The reality is we have a responsibility and have carried that responsibility for a very long time of trying to make this country fulfill its promises that it has refused to fulfill uh, uh, in, in its entirety, which is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to all of its people. Uh, look, you can always stay engaged with what's happening with us on social media at Justin J. Pearson. You can join our movement. You can literally go to votejustinj.com, and you can go and sign up to get our People Powers Times, where we continue to share information about what is happening and offer ways to engage, whether that be showing up to the state capitol, sending emails, reaching out to legislators so that you can be involved. As a culture and as a community, we have to be mobilizing. The reality is now is the time. Our democracy is dying. We are seeing it replaced with autocratic leaders, people who want to be more like dictators and support a mobocracy than a democracy. And so we have to do, do the work of mobilization. You look at what happened over the last 50 years with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Conservatives took our playbook of organizing, and we have to make sure that we reclaim that by organizing, mobilizing, and activating as a community so that we can fight back. And it's not just voting. It's showing up in between time as well. Mustafa? Well, Justin, it's good to see you. You know how proud I am of you. Yeah, what's your vision for the future? Because um, you went through all the dynamics that are currently going on in Tennessee. We know that there's a strategic plan there, but we also know that we have power. There's so many, not just young people, there's elders, there's so many people who appreciate what you're doing. Um, we've got to also make sure that people have hope and they know that there's a brighter tomorrow. So what's your vision? Mm -hmm. I uh, posted this earlier, you know, yesterday was such a difficult day seeing all these bad bills. And today I saw uh, a thousand people gathered protesting against gun violence from moms demand action, students demand action, moms over murder, the 901 block squad. I saw all these organizations getting together and saying, we are going to do something because the future is better than what we are currently inheriting. That the reality of gun violence being the number one killer of our children is not the way that it is always going to be. I saw kids as young as six there to elders who were in their 
80s. And so the hope that I have are the people who are showing up today, realizing that the reason that we march, the reason we protest, the reason we speak up, the reason we fight back is because there are unborn children, as our indigenous brothers and sisters uh, talk about seven generations from now who are counting on us. And I believe my hope for the future lies in the hope that I have and that I have received just today, even on, in, in the Capitol, a place that is so oppressive. It's the voices that continue to cry out in that environment and say, we demand justice. The voices who cry out in that environment and say, whose house? This is our house. Who say, this is what democracy looks like. And so the hope that I have is in us, right? And how we use our God hands and how we use our God heart and how we use our God feet to show up in this moment to push for a better Tennessee, to push for a better America, because we know that the vision of a better place where people have health care and educational opportunity, where people are not worried about environmental degradation and pollution choking their lungs or police brutality killing them, because that vision of America is not something that only needs to live in our heads. It is something that is possible. And the way that it is made possible is by the work that we do. And so I am hopeful of that future coming into reality because we will never quit. And so we will never lose. Representative Pearson, always a pleasure, man. Keep up the fight. Likewise. likewise. Thank you so much, Roland. Uh, Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks. God so bless. All right, folks. Uh, going to break. We'll be right back. Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. You heard why we're marching, and, and it's really a launch. It's not even a march. We're launching. That's right. A 42-week campaign March the 2nd at 10 o'clock in Raleigh and 33 other state capitals right. and the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a historic move to mobilize mm -hmm. the most powerful untapped block of voters in this country, That's right. poor and low wealth voters, mm -hmm. who make up 87 million votes. And it's never been tried before, never been tried before in history. At the same time, the same message, same focus. And when that power turns loose, yes. they will not be able to figure out the political calculus. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shake things up. I'm ready to get up out of the valley. I'm ready for God to put his spirit on us. I'm ready to be used to change this nation. And what we're saying is, can't we come together? Can't we come together around an agenda? You ain't got to like everything about Rem Barber. You don't have to like everything about St. Greer. You don't have to like everything about Long Choir. But can we come together and say, it's time to end poverty as the fourth leading cause of death? It's time to have $15 and a living wage indexed with inflation. So every time inflation goes up, the minimum wage goes up. It's time to have health care for all. It's time to fully fund public education. Can't we come together? It's time to protect women's right to women's health. It's time, it's time to have affordable housing for everybody. It's time to stop the proliferation of guns. Ain't no way folk ought to be able to have more guns than they have food, more guns than they have meat on their table. That means makes no sense. Isn't it time for division to be ended and love to take over? Can't we organize around that? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't need to like everything about you, but can't we organize for power? Can't we stand for justice? Can't we love everybody for just a little while? Can't we come Charles, and I'm from Opelousas, Louisiana. Yes, that is Zodico capital of the world. My name is Margaret Chappelle. I'm from Dallas, Texas, representing the Urban Trivia Game. It's me, Sherry Shepard, and you know what you watch. Roland Martin on Unfiltered.
In Georgia, the hearing to disqualify Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis continued with the former divorce attorney for special prosecutor Nathan Wade back on the stand. Judge Scott McAfee overseeing the Georgia election interference case against Donald Trump and his co-defendants ruled that some of Wade's communications with his former lawyer, Tan Bradley, are not covered by attorney-client privilege. Defense attorneys attempted to impeach Bradley about the romantic relationship between Wade and Willis. Uh, he maintained he couldn't remember when their relationship began. Willis and Wade testified at the previous hearing that their romantic relationship ended in the summer of 2023. The defense attorneys maintained that their relationship began before the investigation, closing arguments on the motion to disqualify Willis based on the conflict of interest allegations are set for Friday. All right, so let's talk about it. First of all, uh, for John Quayle, for folks uh, who don't know, so the dude who testified today, he was the, law, just correct me if I'm wrong, he was Wade's law partner, right? Correct. Represented Wade in his divorce. Correct. Also, his alpha brother. He gets booted from the, the firm over sexual harassment allegations. And then he's end up texting one of the lawyers who's representing the, the, the Trump folk, and he was revealing a lot of stuff he was not supposed to be revealing, correct? You are absolutely correct, and that's the big, that's the, that's the big conflict here, right? Somebody may a, not have a law degree. I mean, a, a law license are, real soon. That's true. I mean, as an attorney, you cannot reveal privileged uh, information about your client or former client to anyone else. Hold on, right? and we First say anybody all, else. Let me tell you what you. Anyone, that your wife, your husband, your partner, your you ain't supposed to talk to nobody. Nobody. And let me tell you what you ultimately cannot do. Right? You cannot use information that you gained from a former client and share that information with the opposing side of that former client that they then use against them that's a conflict and and that's and that's a and that's and there you have the potential of breaking attorney client privilege now there's that's the conflict uh in all of this it, it, uh, Mustafa, it, it was just mind-boggling to, to watch this here, and, and you're sitting here going, dude, how dumb can you be uh, to sit here and engage it in text message after text message after text message? All right, I know you pissed off because you got booted out the firm, but again, uh, Homie may not be practicing law anywhere ever. No, that, that, that's real. But there's a good chance that he's going to lose his law license. Uh, he'll definitely be sanctioned or, or something that'll play out. It's always curious about, I'm like, so which law school did you go to? Who were your professors that did not prepare you <laughs> for the things that you cannot do? Uh, I'm sure they did share the right information, and he's just decided or got caught up. Uh, you know, and, and what's going on. You know, this whole thing is about trying to defame Fanny, uh, to make make her look like she's not competent, that she makes bad choices, then, of course, to remove her. Um, and the other part of it, of course, is that they just want to run out the clock. That has always been Donald Trump's game plan and his counsel is to continue to run out the clock until the election. So folks should make sure that they're actually watching these uh, types of situations very clearly and understanding what the overall game actually is. What, what I don't understand, Larry, is this here. Um, I don't understand how Wade hasn't stepped down from this case. Now, first of all, I've already been on the record. Fonnie Willis screwed up. She should have never put him on this case. Every, you sh she should have said, we got to be just pristine, clean all the way around. Um, but this thing has continued because I think, frankly, the two of them have been too arrogant about this here. The moment they filed that, that motion alleging that was a relationship, look, he should have stepped off of this case. 
This is too big of a case and too important of a case for this stuff to continue because now all the attention the last month has not been on the case, it's been on these two. And when they were screwing, when they stopped screwing, and how many times somebody, I mean, they were talking about t today, did he have a garage door opener, did he not? I mean, it, it's just crazy. Yeah, this is all providing smoke and mirrors for, for all the for Trump folks. And, and you got it right, Roland. You know, uh, as Willis said not long ago, that, you know, these folks, the folks are, that are on trial, they try to overthrow the government, right? They, so let's, it's important to really keep, as you say, as, as the documentary goes, the eyes on the prize. And that's not what was happening. And this is exactly what they want. They want to muddy the waters. I mean, this is, while this is, you know, as a case in the state of Georgia, this is all, all a very big political case. And once again, we're talking about protecting our <laughs> democracy. And so you're right, Roland. You, folks involved in this case have to know how the game goes, right? So they, they know how important this case is. And when you're talking about a case this large, you have to make sure you cross all your T's and dot all your I's. And when you do not, and you allow them to muddy the waters, this is what we get right now. This is like a Netflix documentary. So we need to move away from this, and hopefully the judge makes the right decision so we can make sure that she's not removed from the trial and that we can really focus on what we've already found out and we've seen discussed in trial in terms of the steps that Trump and his other, you know, uh, uh, affiliates to try to take, adva take, take advantage of our democracy. And we have to focus on that and not all this other stuff <laughs> and mirrors and, you know, who's sleeping with who because it's really not relevant to the overall issue of protecting our democracy. Uh, is drama. So uh, hopefully this thing gonna be over tomorrow. So I mean on Friday. So we'll see. All right, folks. Uh, that's it for us. Uh, let me thank Larry, John Quell. Let me thank Mustafa as well. I appreciate y'all being on today's show, uh, folks. <coughs> yes, I'm fighting through these damn allergies. They've been kicking my behind, but uh, it's all good. We're getting through it. And so I appreciate y'all watching us on today's show. Don't forget to support us in what we do. Join the Bring the Fuck Fan Club. See your chicken money order. P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C. 200-37-0196. Cash App, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal, R. Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale, rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. And be sure to get the Black Shot Network app. Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. I'll see y'all tomorrow, folks. How? Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?